Hi, this is Lindsay Bowden, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about conditional statements. So a conditional statement is a statement with a hypothesis and a conclusion. And the statement is going to have the phrase if, comma, then. So if I do something, then something else will happen. And conditional statements are a lot of times symbolized with the letters P and Q. So P stands for your hypothesis. And Q will stand for your conclusion. So an example of a conditional statement, if I eat a whole pizza, that would be your hypothesis then I will be full. That is your conclusion. So there are three different versions of conditional statements. The first one is the converse of a conditional statement. And the converse switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. So Q and then P. So we're going to write the converse of our original conditional statement. If I eat a whole pizza, then I will be full. The converse of that is if I am full, then I have eaten a whole pizza. And notice I kind of reworded it a little bit just so it makes sense and it flows when you speak. You want it to be natural. So if I had just simply reworded it, if I will be full, then I eat a whole pizza. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you can reword it a little bit and that's totally fine. Okay, the inverse is a statement that negates... the hypothesis and the conclusion. So you don't change the order, it's P then Q, but this symbol means not, or the opposite of. So let's write the inverse of our original statement. So if I do not eat a whole pizza, then I will not be full. So the opposite of both the hypothesis, hypothesis and the conclusion. All right. And then the last type of a conditional statement is the contrapositive of the conditional statement. So this actually switches and negates the hypothesis and the conclusion. So Q is first and then P, and it also has the not symbol. So for this one, I could write, if I am not full, oops, then I have not eaten a whole pizza. Okay, so let's do these examples. So the example says, write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of this conditional statement and determine whether the statement is true or false. So the conditional statement is, if a number is even, then it is evenly divisible by two. Okay, so I want you to pause the video here and write down the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of those three, and then you can play and check and see if you got it correct. Okay, so let's see how we did. So the converse, remember, switches your hypothesis and your conclusion. So we could write, if a number is evenly divisible by two, then the number is even. or if a number, remember you wanna make it make sense when you read it out loud. So that's always a good rule of thumb when you're writing these, read it out loud and make sure it makes sense. So if a number is evenly divisible by two,
then it is even. And that is true. Any number that is evenly divisible by 2 will automatically be even. Okay, the inverse you should have gotten if a number is not even... then it is not evenly divisible by 2. And that is also true. So if it's not even, that's automatically going to be an odd number. Any odd number will not divide by 2 evenly. There's always going to be, um, you know, leftovers. Okay, and then the contrapositive of the statement would be if a number is not evenly divisible by 2, then it is not even. And that is also true. Okay, so now that we've gone over the notes, if you have the practice worksheet, you can go ahead and do that now. And then we will get into biconditional statements. Okay, so now that the worksheet is done, of course you would want to check that with your teacher. I'm not going to put those answers on the internet in case your teacher doesn't want them on the internet. Let's go over biconditional statements. So. A biconditional statement is a statement using the phrase if and only if. And a lot of times that'll be abbreviated IFF, -F, if and only if. So an example of that, a polygon is a triangle if and only if it has three sides. And the symbolic representation of that is this symbol here. That's your if and only if. So it's similar to a conditional statement because it still has a hypothesis, which in this example would be a polygon is a triangle, and then it has a conclusion, which is it has three sides, but it has to have this phrase if and only if. And a biconditional statement is true when the conditional statement and the converse of that conditional statement are both true. So let's write the conditional statement for this example above. So a polygon is a triangle if and only if it has three sides. We could say if a polygon is a triangle, then it has three sides. And of course that is true. All triangles have three sides. Okay, and then let's write the converse of that statement. And remember a converse switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we could write, if a polygon has three sides, then it is a triangle. Okay, so that is also true. So the conditional statement is true. The converse is true. That means that the biconditional statement is also true. Okay, so let's do some examples. Okay, so number one says to rewrite the statement as a biconditional statement. So all quadrilaterals have four sides. Pause the video here and try that one. Okay, so we could rewrite this as a shape is a quadrilateral if and only if it has four sides. You could have also written a polygon is a quadrilateral or a figure is a quadrilateral. It doesn't have to be worded exactly like that, but something along those lines. 
Okay, go ahead and try the next three by yourself now. Pause the video and then we'll check. Okay, number two, determine if the biconditional statement is true or false. If it is false, give a counter example. Okay, we'll talk about what that means. So let's determine if it's true or false first. An angle is acute if and only if it is 45 degrees. All right, so that would be false. And a counter example of that would be an acute angle that's not 45 degrees. So a 30 degree angle, that's acute, but it's not 45. So that is a counter example. Okay, number three, rewrite the statement as a biconditional statement. Is it true or false? A rectangle has four angles. So we could say four right angles, sorry. So a shape is a rectangle. I'm going to use my abbreviation here. If and only if it has four right angles. And that is true. Rectangles must have four right angles. Okay, and then the last one, create your own true biconditional statement. Your answers will vary here. Um, I'm going to say a polygon is a pentagon if and only if it has five sides. Okay, so those are the notes for biconditional statements. If you have the practice, you can go ahead and complete that now. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next video.